You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Command Zone podcast. Today is a very special episode for we are bringing you a budget upgrade guide. My favorite. And we have a special guest. Me! I- <laughs> Jake Boss. I work here at the Command Zone. I'm a post-production supervisor. I also do some producing stuff and some directing stuff. Uh, and, and some upgrading stuff. Some upgrading of Tinker Time decks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm your host, Rachel Weeks. And I'm excited to bring you the Tinker Time uh, pre-con from March of the Machine. Remember? One machine. Uh- <laughs> no S. If there's an S, I send it back. <laughs> I reject it. More than one machine? (laughs) Poo-poo. Get yourself in the right mindset, okay? You're a cog in a machine. (laughs) This is the Teamer Bread Precon, which means it is red, green, and blue, and it is all about artifact tokens and making different kinds of artifact tokens. These are the fun colors. Yeah. Teamers that go crazy colors, over-the-top colors. Especially for this type of strategy. I'm always going uh, into the other ones, the the whites and the blacks out there, but the meat and potatoes is in Teamer. Is in Teamer. Yeah, this is the potato Uh, pre-con. Today we are going to go over the stats in the deck. We're going to break down some of the different card types in it, some of the financial statistics in it, and we're going to suggest 10 cards to add and 10 cards to remove from this deck to bring it up into fighting shape. And this time we're trying trying a slimmer budget it's only going to be ten dollars to upgrade upgrade this precon and uh make it even better for your playgroup was it a challenge was it simple and easy as pie stay tuned to find out (laughs) if you're going to pick up some of those 10 cards or any of the singles in this precon go to cardkingdom.com slash command card kingdom is one of the best place to pick up singles it is also a great place to pick up singles and support the show uh card kingdom has an amazing selection of cards they have tons of individual cards but also the different printings the different conditions and foil and non-foil and you can get them all in one place so you're only keeping track of of one package you're only waiting by the door for one package it's coming and your whole deck will arrive and you can sleeve it up and start playing right away so again cardkingdom.com slash command for all of your singles and supporting the show yeah well we love card kingdom uh but you know who else we love mm, who she knows exactly what I'm about to say. Why don't? Ultra Pro. Let's <gasps> oh, go. <yeah. laughs> oh, baby. We love that Ultra Pro. They got the card sleeves. They got the deck boxes. They got my favorite satin towers. And, you know, I had that satin finish on them, the rubberized one for a long time. It's really nice. But I think I need to upgrade my entire collection once more to the glossy the, the finish. The glittery. Oh, the glossy ones? They also have yeah. glitter ones. Well, they got the glittery ones. They got the rainbow one. Mm-hmm. They got the opalescent one. Ugh. They got... A lot of nice uh, satin towers. Mm. Um, and my favorite thing is when I throw them all in the bag, they stack just nice. Mm. Okay. My issue is I've got 14 decks. Uh, and that's not an Ultra Pro problem. That's a me problem. <laughs> uh, so it doesn't fit in the backpack anymore. But they've also got that variant of the satin tower that doesn't have the little dice box on the bottom. So he's a little cube? bit shorter. Satin cube. I love that guy. And then my house is stacked with the. The tapestries, the wall scrolls. That's yeah, 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 yeah. So you look like you live in a magical cathedral. Yeah, whenever I'm working, I stare up and I see my Liliana. I see my triomes to the right and the left. I love it. <laughs> Once again, ultrapro.com slash command for all of your magic accessory favorites. And the other way to support the show is directly. You can support us at patreon.com slash command zone. That is a great way to become a part of the command zone team yourself. You can get early access to extra turns episodes and game nights episodes. You get to uh, exclusive access to extra turns, which is one of my or extra turns. turn talks. Ex- turn talks. That's what it's called. Yeah. Excuse me. To turn talks, which is yeah. uh, a discussion that we have after the game. That's like, how did the game go? Do you have cards that you wish had performed better, or what would you have done if you had drawn that that next card? I think it's probably one of the most important shows that we do. Yeah. As far as like the the sort of stuff that we make, I don't. I wish. More people took advantage of this perk Mm. uh, because, like, this pure feeling that you have after a game, before you've had a chance to process it, game just finished, we look at each other and we're like, ah, man, I felt 
really bad about how my deck performed or, you know, I kind of didn't feel so good about this card, but then it overperformed. Like those mm. pure reactions. It's so uh, fun. I think it's important for people to see that stuff. I also really like when you get to look back and be like, you know what? I made a mistake there. Yes. And if I had done this a little later or if I had anticipated this, then I would have played a little bit better in that game. Yeah. And learning how to improve yourself and start recognizing those mistakes that other players are making is really important. It's probably one of the closest uh, things. Like people always say, uh, why don't you guys just release your uncut footage? I'll watch it like, no, you won't. You don't no, want to It's that. very long. This is probably the closest thing to uncut footage that we do. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's a ton of fun. Uh, so once again, support us at patreon.com slash command zone for we also do one special thing. We dedicate an episode to a Patreon every time. And this episode is dedicated to <laughs> Daniel, Daniel best. best. You're the best. Number one. Daniel, you rock. Thanks for supporting the show. All right, let's get right into it. Today we are talking about the Tinker Time March of the Machine precon uh and there's some really there's some really cool stuff in here yeah rachel uh we were just talking at lunch about uh we were choosing who gets to do what precon mm -hmm. upgrade and i chose this one but you said that you were going to choose this one for me yeah <laughs> i love tokens so much it and is the most jake deck ever i love it so much so if you haven't seen a budget upgrade uh, uh video before remember that we are going to take 10 cards and add them into the deck to make it more powerful and more synergistic and cooler we're going to take 10 cards out to make room for those and we're going have a budget of ten dollars a little bit of a challenge for the march machine uh we are going to leave the mana base largely as is but first let's talk about what is actually in this box of magic cards let's talk about the commanders who's the face of this deck jake face of this deck is gimbal gremlin prodigy uh it's reminiscent of urza chief artificer mm -hmm. uh just kind of taking advantage of uh, the how about I just read that? Yeah, let's Rather than paraphrasing, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, Gimbal Gremlin Prodigy is two, a green, a blue, and a red. So two in Teamer for a legendary creature, Kremlin Artificer. He's a 4-4. Four, four. Artifact creatures you control have trample. And at the beginning of your end step, create a 0-0 zero, zero red Gremlin Artifact creature token. Put X-1-1 one, one counters on it, where X is the number of differently named artifact tokens you control. So yeah. you go really wide with a bunch of different stuff uh -huh. and then make a single big stinky. Right. <laughs> you make one gremlin a turn. So it's uh, if you have like a clue, a treasure, a, a, a token copy of something that's a that like a token copy of a soul ring. And so you that's, throw all that junk into one place. Into one place like gremlins love yeah. to do. And it becomes one gremlin construct. Yeah. Uh, I, I think cool. it's interesting. It's. I, I, it's just not how I like to play tokens personally. I like to go wider. Mm -hmm. it, this rewards you for going wide, but the reward is kind of mild. Yeah. There is another commander that comes with this deck that you can switch immediately. You could put this one as the face as well. This one is also teamer. It is one green, blue, and red for Rashmi and Ragavan, a 2-4 elf monkey it feels like these should have commas elf <laughs> comma monkey uh and it says whenever you cast your first spell during each of your turns exile the top card of target opponent's library and create a treasure token then you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost if it's a spell with mana value less than the number of artifacts you control if you don't cast it this way you may cast it this turn so wow. That's very powerful. So it's a, the first spell you cast. <laughs> you basically impulse draw the top card of one of your opponent's libraries, and you can cast it for free if you have a like a, a certain number of artifacts. Mm -hmm. So if you flip like a, a signet off of the top of your opponent's library, and you have three artifacts, you just put that signet into play. <laughs> this is wild. Like, yeah. Why is this a secondary commander? It's so powerful. <laughs> like, uh, was is this at one point the face commander and? It just made the box too attractive. Like it, this it's is a, wild. It's a crazy card. It's lucky that it only triggers once per turn and only on your turns. You can only do this once unless you, you copy the ability or something like that, which you can. <laughs> um, but it's pretty fun. I, I mean, this is ramp and card draw on a commander. It's trying to do so many different things too that you uh -huh. can go in a lot of different directions with this deck. Like it's artifacty it's mm -hmm. uh impulsive dry which has a ton of payoffs nowadays yep uh and you know i've got some of those in the list here but th there's uh, there's just a lot of different things that you can do with this and i appreciate this design a lot yeah 
I uh, I really appreciate this design as well um, because it, it gives you like two di- very different ways to build tokens. Mm-hmm. One of them is value. One of them is a little bit more aggro. Uh, so it you can build to suit your style. So let's get into the 99 of this deck. We're going to break down the... Let's slow down since I was lost here. Stats. Very good. We nailed it, I think. We got to charge the stats think, machine. Yeah, you <laughs> It's on its last leg. <laughs> <laughs> it is tinker time indeed <laughs> with the <Yeah. laughs> stats thing. I think she's running the first commander, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a gremlin in there. He's been chewing on the wires. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the different categories of cards that make up this deck. Let's talk about the nuts and bolts of this Tinker Time deck. Oh, yeah. So let's go with the ramp spells first. Holy moly, 22. That's so many. Let's give it up for the ramp spells. Wow. Whoa. That's <laughs> and, a lot of ramp. <laughs> and the card draw spells. We've got 10. Single target removal. 11. Pretty good. Me, oh, my. And then board wipes, we got one. Nice. And lands, 38. Okay. So these are actually quite reasonable stats. 38 yeah. seems a little high in the lands department, but I like to start at 38, especially when you're running 22 <laughs> ramp spells. I think our friends uh, who are kind of new to the game who are picking up this box uh, might also be inclined to say cut a land when they shouldn't. Yeah, so, so no, 38 is perfect. 30, uh, uh, I don't know about that. Like, <laughs> but this takes care of those folks who are you know, probably going to cut a land here or there. Gets yeah. them down to still a healthy number. About what number do you think, Rachel, would be ideal for this? Um, with 22 ramps, ramp pieces, I think you're probably safe around, around 36. Right. I would probably... Like, like the way I like to build is, is I do 36 lands and then I usually have a, a couple modal spells in there. Yep. So I, I think you're you're quite safe anywhere between like 35 and 35 feels a little low. 36 and like 38. Yeah, I, I think we could probably use a little bit more in the card draw department. I then agree. The disparity in the removal versus the board wipes, like, hmm. This is more how I like to build lately, yeah. actually, is higher on targeted removal and a little lower on the board wipe section, because that's just kind of how I like games to play out. Yep. I like fewer board wipes and more spot removal. It makes for more surprises. It makes for swingier games. And it doesn't make for the long games where everybody's cast three board wipes. Yeah. And the only thing that you do on your turn is wipe the board. And then, and then it comes back around to you. Exactly. Yeah. So I actually like that they're putting a little bit fewer wipes in these boxes. Yeah, I wish we had a little bit more card draw because drawing into those lands late game is not going to feel good. Not going to so. feel good. So probably want to up this card draw section yep. indeed. But all right, let's talk about the more specific uh, synergy pieces of the deck. In, uh, so a little more deck specific yeah. stats. So artifact token makers is mm-hmm. 24. Wow. Artifact token payoffs is 13 mm-hmm. and evasion is four. So anytime I see an artifact token maker right. uh, in a deck, I'm thinking, hmm, is, is this leaning towards a particular strategy, which mm. we'll get to later yeah. on. Mm-hmm. So, um, but that many creators and payoffs feels pretty good. It feels pretty good for both commanders, I think, because you, but for both of them, want you to have a lot of artifacts. Uh, Gimbal wants you to have a lot of different artifacts, Mm -hmm. but Rashmi just wants pure width on those. So cool. All right. Well, let's ask that question then. If you're going to build this deck to be its most powerful out of the box, (laughs) who would you put in the command zone, Jake? It's got to be Rashmi and Ragavan. They're, like, it's, they're pretty sweet. It's so good. I, honestly, for the folks who are driving right now, mm-hmm. let's read this again. Rashmi and Ragavan, four mana. It's an elf monkey. Good start. <laughs> Two, four. Whenever you cast your first spell during each of your turns, exile the top card of each opponent's library, of target opponent's library, and create a treasure token. Then you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost if it's a spell with mana value less than the number of artifacts you control. If you don't cast it this way, you may cast it this turn. So you're keeping that card. Uh, if you didn't meet the threshold, if you did meet the threshold, it's Value Town USA. Yeah. That I, insane. I forgot it made the treasure token. The treasure I, the token. The treasure token is agreed. <laughs> <laughs> like, so even if you don't cast that spell, just casting your first spell on your turn, which you're going to do, makes yeah. you a treasure token and impulse draws a card. <laughs> it's like, it's tough because the, this is just a paragraph of text for the folks mm. who are just reading it. Mm. But really, like the list of everything that happens here is pretty vital. It's it, so good. It's a lot of steps. Yeah, I definitely th- agree with you here. I think Rashmi and Ragavan in the command zone will get you a ton of value and fills in some of that card draw that the deck is missing in the stats. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so we are going to break down the monetary value of what is inside the deck. Uh, this will take into this only takes into account the value of the reprints. Obviously, we don't know the value of the cards that have yet to be printed. That market does not exist and has not been stabilized yet. So this is just the reprinted cards in the in the box, which of which there are sixty seven. Uh, so I guess let's talk about the total reprint value of the deck. Total reprint value is ninety dollars and twenty five cents. Ba 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 ba. It's sparkling. It's glowing. It's perfect. It was sparkling and glowing, but uh, kind of not not for a good reason. A little low. Um, so if we compare this number to the average reprint value of similar precons in the past or in the in the recent past anyway, uh, we'll see that this is on the lower end of the spectrum. So Commander 2019 average reprint value was about $80. Uh, Forgotten Realms was 115 Ooh. Neon Dynasty was on the low end. It was about 73 But then Baldur's Gate back up to 104 Brothers War 95 all will be one averaged about $101. And remember, these prices are taken uh, at the before the decks are actually announced. So those prices will change, but we're comparing them all at the same time. So it's m mostly a relative number, not necessarily a like a real number. Yeah, I mean, to the folks who are watching this episode, I would ask this question, okay? What are you trying to do here? Okay. Are you trying to build your collection? Are you trying to load up on cards? Are you trying to have a deck here? Because honestly, I look at my Prosper precon, uh -huh. and I've replaced it. Prosper is one of my most tuned decks. There's a lot of the DNA that's still there. And from day one, the bones of that deck were together. So if mm. this is a deck that you're trying to introduce into your arsenal, you're trying to get it its own special satin tower and put it in the bag, you know, like... I don't know. Reprint value just doesn't matter that much to me when I'm buying this product. Yeah, I think the fact that this is like a cool synergistic deck does stick out a little bit further. But it's nice to know just how much like actual value you're yep. getting out of the box. Speaking of, we are going to get into the notable reprints in this deck. We're going to split them up uh, into we're going to mention all cards in the deck that are worth more than two dollars at time of recording. So this is, bef again, before the deck is spoiled. Uh, there are. Uh, we're going to split them into two categories. It is the $5 and more category and the cards between $2 and $5. So first, let's talk about the cards that are worth $5 or more. It's a short list, Jake. It, you know, a category is a real stretch. It's yeah. one. It's tireless <laughs> tracker. That's the entire category. of. Uh, it's a $5.50 reprint. That is the most expensive reprint in the whole box. A little disappointing, uh, I think, in this category, especially when we've seen like Flawless Maneuver got reprinted in a pre-con recently, and that's like $25. But hey, let me make a great point. When I was doing this upgrade, the $10, easy, because mm. good cards in this strategy cheap cheap mm. they have printed a lot of them and uh you can actually see how many good ones they printed because there's a ton of cards in the two dollar to five dollar category there are 17 me oh my cards between the prices of two and five dollars at time of recording yeah academy manufacturer definitely sticks out mm -hmm. at four dollars and fifty cents another good reprint curse of opulence is Love still it. around four dollars and fifty cents frostboro snarl that's a strict saving land mm -hmm. for four dollars wow those are so high yeah that's a pretty stunning perplexing test vine glimmer snarl blood forge blood forge battle axe mm -hmm. legendary in a token strategy yeah three dollars i just bushes and strategery <laughs> <laughs> uh fiery confluence Gilded Goose, $3, Spell Swindle, yeah, $3. all three dollars. There is there is one plane chase card that is in on this list. It's Glimmer Void Basin that is not in the ninety nine of this box, but it was considered in the overall value of the box because they are cards that you get out of it. Yeah, I think it's worth saying that this box includes plane chase cards. Yeah, brand ten, new thing we've ever seen. Ten plane chase cards, five new ones, five old ones. Um, some of these reprints are, are like a couple of bucks because Plane Chase is so fun to yeah. play that, you know, people have, have picked up these cards over the years. So there is some additional value in here. But there's even, I mean, Chaos Warp is $2.25. Brass's Bounty, $2.25. Skyclave, Re Skyclave Relic, $2.25. Soul Ring, still $2.25. <laughs> it 
can't be brought down. We gotta have a soul ring sale it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to raise money to right? save the farm. Right? I feel like something. in this house alone, there must be two hundred soul rings. <laughs> 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 Imprisoned in the moon is two dollars. Reality shift two dollars. Tireless provisioner two dollars so a lot of cards in that sort of mid-range like you want to keep the prices down but uh they've been reprinted a lot between two and five dollars and again there's just so many options in a token strategy Mm -hmm. like you're going to be fine with a lot of these cards like right i i don't think that necessarily the monetary value of this deck is uh indicative indicative that's good. There we go. We got there. Of uh, <laughs> <laughs> of the actual power level of the deck. Uh, so let's talk about the best cards in the deck. These are the cards that if they're in your hand, you're like, I know we're cooking. We're, yeah. d- we're doing good. Yeah, like this is a keeper. You're going to have to convince me not to keep this hand. So uh, one of my favorite cards in the deck is Inspiring Statuary. Oh, great answer. Three mana artifact, non-artifact spells you cast have improvised, which means... Uh, each artifact that you tap after you're done activating mana abilities pays for one generic mana in the cost. Uh, this card is so cool. It's so powerful. Um, to be So improvise just means you can tap all of your artifacts to make mana as long as you're not casting an artifact spell. And in a deck that wants to make artifact tokens specifically, yep. you're going to have a lot of artifacts. <laughs> yeah, the, the little gremlin is a perfect way to look at what this deck is going to do for you. Mm. It's just creating a bunch of junk. Yeah, just like, crap. Yeah, just crap. Like, m- one of my favorite tokens in recent years uh, is called Scrap. Yeah, it's awesome. It does nothing. <laughs> it's just a th- an artifact. That's it. And that's what a lot of these are, like blood tokens, you know, clues. Who uh, cares what they food do? Food tokens. Yeah. Right. You're just an artifact. You just stand there and be an artifact. You yeah. Know? They're just bodies on the board. Inspiring and Statuary loves those. Gives you a lot of value off of your scrap. The other one loves a scrap. It's Rise and Shine. Mm. One in a blue for a sorcery. Target non-creature artifact you control becomes a zero, zero artifact creature. Put four plus one plus one counters on each artifact that became a creature this way. And then it says overload for blue, blue. So you can bring all of your scrap to life. Yeah. They it's all- <laughs> going to be like Fantasia 2000 Mickey Mouse <laughs> up in my board. There's brooms and they're singing Be Our Guest. It's a real. <laughs> <laughs> I think of that scene in Beauty and the Beast. It's like all the plates yeah. washing themselves and stuff. It's they a become four fours. Yeah. Oh, no, it's horrifying. Uh, they didn't and have it- any furniture left in the house once everybody came back to life. Mm. That sucks. Ugh. Brutal. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, this is a finisher. This card is awesome. Uh, yeah. I use it as a finisher in a lot of these decks. Mm. I've, spoiler, I've built this type of deck like at least five or six times. It's so fun like, to play. You get to do so much. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to get into how exactly this deck works. What does it actually do after a couple of words from our sponsors? We'll be right back. Deep within the jungles of Ixalan, a primal hunger awakens. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm Galta, and let me tell you, I am one hungry, hungry dino. Now that it's warm out, I'm always on the go, which means I'm working up a bigger appetite than ever. Thankfully, I have Factor to help me power up for springtime. Factor delivers chef-crafted meals that are ready to eat in just two minutes, perfect for those ancient cravings that just can't wait. That means no more trips to the grocery store and no more picking up expensive takeout. Plus, with over 30 nutritious meals each week, including options from Keto to Protein Plus, they always have tons of delicious choices to devour, like their scrumptious herb-crusted chicken. And since each meal is dietitian approved, they're sure to keep you energized from Immortal Sunrise to Immortal Sunset. Factor really is the dino-mite way to fuel your (laughs) dino-mite. Head to factormeals.com slash command50 and use code command50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code command50 at factormeals.com slash command50 to get 50% off your first box. You come to me, Lord Xander, on the day of my daughter's podcast and ask me to do you a favor? Well, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. It's not in a threatening way. I've just got a really good deal. Did you know you can get Raycon's top tier audio quality for just half the price of other premium brands? No one should refuse an offer like that. And if inflation's got you running low on moolah, Raycon has buy now, pay later options, plus easy and free returns. And with Raycon's eight hours of playtime and 32 hour battery life, your earbuds will never cut out halfway through your big murder podcast. 
I barely have to lift a finger to use their intuitive earbud tap functions. And with the perfect in-ear fit from their optimized gel tips, they won't even fall out if your head gets cut off. Forget about it. And in your final moments, nobody's gonna hear you scream. If they're using Raycon's noise isolation, that is. It's no wonder they have over 50,000 five-star reviews. So if you get Raycons of your own, it'll be just like I counted your spell, because you'll end up with two treasures. The Raycons! <laughs> <laughs> what, you think that's funny? I amuse you? Um... Go to buyraycon.com slash command today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash command to score 15% off. Again, buyraycon.com slash command. So, big in-person magic events, they're back in full swing. And when you're preparing for a magic con, you need to remember the essentials. Your magic decks, your magic apparel, your deodorant, please don't forget that one. The most important essential of all, staying hydrated. So make sure to bring your liquid IV along for the ride. It's a great way to stay hydrated at every step of your trip, from the long flights to the even longer days jamming games at a con. Just mix it in water and you're good to go. One stick of liquid IV gives you five essential vitamins and hydrates you two times faster than water alone, which means you've optimized your water. I personally use liquid IV a ton, whether I'm traveling for magic, out in the desert for wasteland weekend, or even just at home. It's convenient, leaves me feeling good, and their strawberry flavor is my favorite. Basically, it's the perfect way to keep cool and feel cool. Now, look, will it make you as cool as Lady Danger herself? I mean, we can't promise that. But hey, it's a good start. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code COMMAND at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code COMMAND at liquidiv.com. All right, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. We are going to talk about how to play this Tinker Time uh, pre-con and how to upgrade it to get it in real fighting shape so you can bring it to any table and make sure it's performing at its best. Uh, first of all, before we talk about the upgrades, let's just talk about this deck's deck in the box. What are your first impressions of it? I think it's going to be a lot of fun to play. I mm -hmm. think you have a couple of different options for, uh, do I feel like going for the win? Uh, if in that case, I think I would go with the face commander cause I could probably punch through damage. I could mm -hmm. probably be more focused. Yeah. If not, do I want to go for value and just do more game actions? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for Rashmi and Ragavan. Yeah. So this deck can be a couple of different things for me straight out of the box. Right. I love that. And it's Teamer, which is cool. We haven't seen a lot of Teamer creatures being printed in the last couple of years. Teamer's, one of, the, teamer's one of the lower represented yeah. uh, three colored pairs. And I think it's a color pair that people get really excited about and feel very passionately about when they have it. So I love that we have two different but similar yeah. uh, Teamer commanders that we can add to the list. Um, all right. So we are going to talk about the cards to add to this deck to make it uh, shiny and new and powerful. And Jake has added some really cool ones. Uh, remember that we are keeping this budget tight this time around. It's only $10 easy. to bring this pre-con up to fighting shape. It's an easy $10 and there's some very cool cards. All right. Those are card kingdom prices, by the way. Like, yeah. These are the premium, nice, fancy, single yeah, this envelope. Is, this is the prices. near mint price uh, of it, card yeah, kingdom. That's yeah. right. All right, so let's talk about the very first card on the list. It is the most important. Oh my gosh, me, oh my, it's my boy. Brutaclad, Telcor, Engineer at 75 cents. He's still so cheap. Uh, th this deck is straight up going to be built around Brutaclad. Or read Brutaclad Brut Brut for us so we know what so, we're doing. Here we go. Brutaclad, Telcor, Engineer, four, a blue and a red, six mana total, for a legendary artifact, creature, and I believe he's a Phyrexian, yeah. Artificer. Mm -hmm. He was... Uh, what do you call that? Eroded? Eroded. Oracled. Uh, completed. <laughs> he's pre-completed. Complete. He's already completed. And he's a 4-4. Four, four, uh, and he says, creature tokens you control have haste. At the beginning of combat, on your turn, create a 2-1 blue mirror artifact creature token. Okay, so now I got a 2-1. Then I might choose a token I control. If I do, each other token you control becomes a copy of that token. So let's say I've got a 10-10. And I've got a treasure, a food, a clue, and a scrap, and then my little 2-1. Mm -hmm. I can choose that 10-10, and now everything becomes a 10-10. Yeah, your food becomes a giant Eldrazi or whatever it is. Scary. It's Scary so stuff. cool. Plus, they have haste. <laughs> yes. Brutaclide gives them haste. This is like one of my favorite cards to build around. I've watched that episode of the Command Zone like 
50 mm-hmm. times before I started working here. Um, That's one of the ones that brought me in too. Really? The Brutal Cloud pre-gun. Oh, the up- so the cool. pre-gun upgrade. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Yeah, I think uh, DJ was on that episode and I'm mm-hmm. thinking to myself, yeah, I gotta get a Blood Forge battle axe and all my problems in life will be solved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, I've, I've been inspired by this many times and I've this is probably the fifth or sixth time I've built a deck around it. I had a yeah. Garth One-Eyed deck. You know, I've... I've, I've tried this a lot of different ways <laughs> he's so much fun to play and remember we're b- building around rashmi and ragavan so your commander is also making a treasure token whenever you cast your first spell so if you just have rashmi and ragavan and brutaclad you're making two tokens already they can both be mirrors or they could both be treasure tokens if you'd like yeah there's a there's a lot of nifty ways that you can use this like i found myself accidentally making land tokens like oh that's neat (laughs) it's so important to the deck that uh i would almost consider a hidden commander yeah for sure well if you're putting a hidden commander in this deck we're gonna need some ways to find it you're darn right Uh, i think we can talk about both of these at once yeah fierce empath and treasure mage Uh uh-huh fierce empath is uh two and a green for a one one creature elf and it says when it enters the battlefield you may search your library for a creature card with cmc six or greater reveal it put it into your hand then shuffle so we'll use that to go get Brutaclad. Mm-hmm. And then Treasure Mage is the same thing, but two and a blue for a human wizard 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, tutor for an artifact with six CMC or greater, put in your hand. So if we're building around Art- Brutaclad so much that we need these tutors, it's it means that, that, that this is like a big way that we're going to try to win the game. Yeah. Is make turn the cool tokens that the deck sort of already knows how to make and turn them all into that. Yeah, I've got. Cool. A f- I'm sorry, I'm making this episode long for no reason, but uh, <laughs> a fun story was on my second day of work. It was actually the Make a Wish day, uh-huh. uh, where Evan and Mark Rosewater were here, um, and they're shooting extra turns. And Josh was looking for a deck to borrow, and I was like, "Hey, I've got my Brutaclad deck," um, and so I was so excited to see Josh Lee quiet play my deck on yeah. camera. <laughs> and then he just pilots it so expertly that. Mm. By the time it's to, he's ready to go for the win and close out the game, that's when he plays Prudiclad. Mm-hmm. Whereas I'd been playing it to get that 2-1 early on or to convert a bunch of tokens on my way to victory. The strategy is build a huge force of tokens, mm-hmm. get that thing you're trying to get, and then play him. So yeah. don't play him too early. Yeah, for sure. Treat Br- Brutaclad like a win con or like an overrun. Right. Uh, and make sure you have that cool token already on board. Right. Uh, this next card does sort of a Brutaclad thing. It gets you those cool tokens. It does It does that too. This is Essex Fractal Bloom. It's four, a green and a blue for a 4-4. Four, four. Flying legendary creature Fractal. Uh, Strixhaven-y. Uh, so the first time you would create one or more tokens during each of your turns, you may instead choose a creature other than Essex and create that many tokens that are copies of that creature pretty cool weird games get weird (laughs) essex is so powerful (laughs) it can become a copy of any creature so if you're like i'm gonna make three food tokens no you're not you're gonna make three of the consecrated sphinx i don't know (laughs) it's gonna be something that big and nasty for sure it's the scariest thing at the table as long as it's not legendary and i suppose not not essex there's so many like uh internal judge calls of like oh my god this crazy thing's gonna oh wait but it says not oh okay not essex got it yeah (laughs) Uh, like essex just makes a game strange and that's what we're here for (laughs) i use essex as a win con in one of my decks as well Mm -hmm. um so it gives you really cool tokens for brutaclad to copy it also turns a lot of these like make a ton of artifact spells that are in the deck and are also in the upgrade into really powerful board states which is exciting yeah all right so if we have all these ways to make tokens cool let's figure out how to make a ton of tokens in this section make tokens (laughs) so (laughs) there's a lot of different slots or cards that can go into this slot of a five cmc counter spell that gifts you back a bunch of things Mm -hmm. you think wow a five cmc counter spell it Mm -hmm. better be pretty good it better so depending on your play group you might swap this out for something else but this one is access denied it's three blue blue for an instant counter target spell create x one one colorless sopter artifact creature tokens with flying where x is that spells mana value that's so okay. many. <laughs> it's so fun. Depending on your play group, uh, you might end up with this only ever giving you two or three or something mm-hmm. like that. And at that rate, maybe not worth it. Mm-hmm. The flying is a big deal. They've got haste. They've got, you know, like this is one of those cards that for me that 
in any other deck that's not this not interested yeah <laughs> it's too much if you can make a if you can get enough value off of those thopters even if you just make three or four yeah this kind of spell is so powerful because brutal Clyde can turn those into four amazing creatures or essex can turn them all into one scary thing and it's it can be very very cool and explosive in this deck yeah and you don't have to have your commander out for it to work or anything right. like that you're just trying to this the whole game plan is make a big pile of junk mm -hmm. um, and then do something cool with it later yeah <laughs> figure, that's my life figure game out what to do with it like yeah <laughs> <laughs> this next card is sweet because it makes a ton like a lot of tokens and good tokens to copy yeah it's killer service it's two and a green for an enchantment when it enters the battlefield create a number of food tokens equal to the number of opponents you have so three for three mana already pretty good mm -hmm. at the beginning of your end step you may pay two and sacrifice a token any one of them if you do create a four four green rhino tree creature token four so, is big yeah four is big four is uh that's going to do some stuff on the board and cause a problem for somebody. Mm. Yeah, I uh, like this card. This include a lot because it's not something that you necessarily look really closely at uh, unless you played in this pre-con, but it's really, really good in Tinker Time. Yeah, and only two mana to change something into a 4-4. Four, four. That's great. Mm -hmm. I like that it doesn't have to be this turn. I like that it's not five mana today necessarily. It yeah. might be two mana here, two mana, or sorry, three mana here, two mana next turn. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nice to split it up like that and give you the option. Yeah, I like this one a lot. All right, this next one, speaking of cool tokens, uh, why did you include this next one? Double Major. It's a uh, green and a blue for an instant, and it says copy target creature spell you control, except it isn't legendary if the spell is legendary. Whoo! So this one is a little funky because it copies a creature on the stack. So you have to save up that two extra mana. Yeah. Not always feeling great. That's fine. This is great for redundancy mm -hmm. um, in case your Brutaclad strategy is feeling a little iffy. You can copy it on its way in. Uh, you can copy Rashmi, get that extra value. Mm -hmm. You can copy, what's the gremlin's name? Gimbal. You can copy Gimbal. You can make two <laughs> gremlin artificers a turn. Two big stinkies and They could a have turn. trample trample. They could have a super trample or more importantly, redundant trample because <laughs> suddenly if somebody's like, okay, uh, I'll block with a bunch of one ones and kill your commander. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Uh, but the double major uh, is really cool in a Brutaclad strategy because it creates non-legendary uh, versions of it. Mm -hmm. So we can convert all of our stuff into Essex or all of our stuff into extra Brutaclads. Um, I love this. <sighs> Copying all of the Rashmi and Ragavans. So That's if, too if much. You, if you we cast do Rashmi and Ragavan and then you copy it and now uh, the first time you cast any spell you you target like 15 opponents and draw the top 15. This card is... Teamer's crazy. <laughs> so I, I kind of have a problem with it being so easy to make non-legendary versions of yeah. things i think it should be a little bit you know more of a step like spark double is a hard card mm -hmm. for me to you know yeah wrestle with i like to see an extra step like this where yeah. you have to do it while it's on the stack you have to get a little creative mm -hmm. uh and it just barely works but when it does it's cool it's very cool. double major is definitely one of those cards uh, speaking of sweet tokens, this is one of my favorite ways to make tokens. I think this is like one of the first times that we interacted on Twitter or something a few years ago. I like, talk about, about this Ride of the Raging Storm. All the time. It's Ride of the Raging <laughs> Storm. Three red red for an enchantment. It says creatures named Lightning Rager can't attack you or planeswalkers you control. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player creates a 5-1 red elemental creature token named Lightning Rager. It has trample haste and at the beginning of the end step, sacrifice this creature. I feel like you just have to say that like Joe Manganiello. Yeah. Lightning Rager. Lightning Rager. <laughs> like, it's so sick and it spreads so much damage out on the board. <laughs> and get this. If you have Bruticlad out, 5-1 Trampoly, fellas, is pretty stinking good. It's pretty good. Oh, it's, my God. So, Right of the Raging Storm, I think, is so much fun, especially in, like, in pre-cons where it feel a little bit lower powered because it just starts throwing fives around that your opponents kind of have to take. <laughs> yeah, a lot of decks can't support a five-mana card that's, uh -huh. you know, late in the game. But in a pre-con environment, you certainly can. And you get your mana back out of it, I feel, mm -hmm. just worth of damage. Definitely. Like, by the time it comes back to you... Probably 20 damage has been dealt mm -hmm. to your opponents. Yeah. We take that. Pretty sweet. I, I really like uh, 
right of the raging storm and definitely what it does to a game where it's like okay there's a bit of a clock now yeah. there's no more dawdling <laughs> uh, and with brutal clad it's just way too good you gotta yeah. really fun five one trample tokens so good all right we've got two more cards to add to this deck to really punch it up into fighting space uh these next two are just a little bit more value based yeah. I, i'm trying to be a signpost for folks here like uh this next card wild magic sorcerer it's mm. three in a red for a four three the first spell you cast from exile each turn has cascade yeah so, notably rashmi and ragavan exiles that card so you'll cast that from exile exactly all that good exile payoff that we've had in the last couple of years like pay attention you yeah. know throw it in um this is just saying look at that package of stuff that came from impulsive draw world uh, sure. in the last couple of years yeah and this is a really fun one because it means you turn a spell of your opponents into a spell of your own so it might have a little bit more synergy with your deck and you still get you get a treasure and a spell and another spell it's very hard to keep up with that amount of value it's also likely that let's say i get an underwhelming spell like uh, an arcane signet uh -huh, or something yeah. i get that it has cascade and now i'm thunderously going through my deck until i hit my soul ring fun yeah it yeah. feels a little bit better yeah i than agree just a, a responsible draw okay next card is idol of oblivion the best two mana for an artifact it has tap and draw a card activate only if you created a token this turn i definitely plan on doing that and then mm -hmm. eight tap sacrifice, create a 10, 10 Eldrazi creature token. That is a cool token. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we need yeah. is a big honking 10, 10 Eldrazi to choose and convert all of our stuff into once we got that brood of clad out. Yeah, and the idol, like, it's not it's not idling. Uh, it's not stuff. idle while well, yeah. you're there. Uh, idol of Oblivion is one of the most powerful draw spells that they have created in the last few years yeah. because it's just tap draw a card if you've made an artifact token which in this deck or if you've made it to any token excuse me and in this deck you're definitely going to be making tokens so i cast a spell i uh ex impulsive draw from mm. somebody else's library yeah. i get a treasure token now i can activate idol of oblivion tap it draw a card of my own Ugh. oh this card is so great, and I love that they're reprinting it so much to keep this value down to a dollar. Yeah, it's impressive. It's a really great card, and uh, definitely don't sleep on it. Yeah, you. so you put together this list of 10 cards, and they're really powerful, and they're really synergistic, and add this cool uh, Secret Commander Brutaclad moment, and you've only spent $7.75 to upgrade this deck. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, you know, the thing about it is uh, the folks at home, they're the ones who inspired me. <laughs> No, shout out to any <laughs> Telcor engineers. Yeah, uh, who, who here is from Telcor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> the thing that I find really easy about it is so much stuff makes tokens probably a little too much. Yeah, um, a lot of those these days, and it's all so affordable. Like, oh my god, Academy Manufacture. Yeah, that was reprinted in this deck. Yeah, super good card. Really, and I expect powerful. it to be like it's like twenty bucks worth of value. Yeah, even though it only costs just a couple. Yeah, of like dollars. four bucks, and in, yeah. with another reprint, who knows what it'll be so that's why it's so easy to keep this budget down yeah let's say you want to scale it up and add another 10 cards you're not going to have a hard time finding yeah the i mean we've got a couple of honorable mentions that didn't quite make the top 10 either because of budget or because they just didn't quite give enough value for that budget yeah so let's talk about your honorable mentions for the list oh i love this card uh tezzeret betrayer of flesh two blue blue for a legendary planeswalker the first activated ability of an artifact you activate each turn costs two less to activate that's great so with clues, mm -hmm. great with blood, food. food. Oh, it's all good. Yeah. Uh, and then it's plus one is draw two cards and discard two cards unless you discard an artifact card. Minus two, target artifact becomes an artifact creature. If it isn't a vehicle, it has base power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. And the ultimate is minus six. You get an emblem with whenever an artifact you control becomes tap draw a card. The starting loyalty is four. Really, like, I don't care what the rest of the abilities are uh, once I'm looking at this uh, first static ability. Yeah. I love that. It's really great. And it's great with a lot of the cards that are going to be in this deck. Anything that makes the just junk tokens that have activated abilities like we talked about. But even like Idol of Oblivion, now yeah. it would be six and tap to make that 10-10 Eldrazi. Um, and this is each turn. Too. Each turn. So let's say I've got four clues stocked up. I'm going to crack a clue on my turn, your turn, his turn, their turn. Mm -hmm. Like, that's pretty darn good. Yeah. And then all of these abilities are just gravy on top of that. It's really strong. Uh, a very cool Planeswalker. Definitely worth picking up for only $3.50. All right, we've got one more that didn't quite make it to the top 10, but it's still a very powerful card. 
Jahira, friend of the forest. Yeah. Tuna green for a legendary creature, human elf, druid. It's a two, three, and it says tokens you control have tap to add green and choose a background. Yeah. That's kind of neat. It's quite powerful. It's like also inspiring statuary. It's also inspiring statuary. You can sneak in another inspiring statuary just for green for only a dollar and 50 cents. Uh, why didn't this quite make the top 10 for you? Because it's not a signpost. Mm-hmm. Like all of these fun little cards, like let's say access denied. Mm-hmm. Like let's get real here. Access denied is not a powerhouse. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it's something to keep your eye on as you're building this deck. There's a lot of spells out there that do neat, interesting things. And we're mm-hmm. already highlighting inspiring statuary. Mm-hmm. That's why Jahira didn't make it into the, you should buy these list. Yeah. Like you're getting an appetizer sampler of how you could possibly build this deck with this upgrade guide. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I would start with those and then look at these honorable mentions as, you know, fun ofs or whatever. Yeah. Like Deseret, if you go in the clue direction is right. really good, but if you don't, not so good. Not as good. Yeah, for sure. Um, I like Jahira and also like this deck does a lot of things really well and mana isn't necessarily as trouble. It does start with mm-hmm. 22 ram spells in it. So and you're if, getting a treasure. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And you get a treasure. Your commander also says ramp on it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Jahira Bye. isn't necessarily the top 10 of cards you want to sneak in, but is a very powerful card. Uh, all right, we've added 10 cards to the deck. We need to take 10 cards out the hardest part of the deck building process. Let's talk about the 10 cards to cut. Aid from the Cowl is the first one. It's three green green for an enchantment. It has revolt. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, easy in this deck, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a permanent card, you may put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, you may put it on the bottom of your library. Mm. So it's kind of like a scribe where if it's a permanent, you can put it out for free. Uh, 19 permanent cards in the deck. Oofed. 19 non-permanent cards. Non-permanent cards. Yes. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, so 20% of the time, you're going to get a kick in the keister by this card. Yeah, 20% of the time, this card just doesn't do anything, and it only triggers on your turn. It's a five-mana enchantment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's not great in this deck. Untap, upkeep, draw. Okay, I'll spend all my mana and cast Aid from the Cowl. <laughs> Beginning my end step, nothing happens. Your turn. Yeah. Aid from the Cowl is great in a deck that is entirely permanent, but after the upgrades, and even with what's in the box, there are a ton of non-permanent spells in this deck. All right, next is Dance with Calamity. It's seven and a red for a sorcery. Shuffle your library as many times as you choose. You may exile the top card of your library. If a total mana value of the cards exiled this way is 13 or less, you may cast any number of cards, any number of spells from among them without paying their mana costs. <laughs> Fun. I guess this is... <laughs> to, to be clear, it's shuffle your library and then as many times as you choose, you reveal oh, I said until that you hit 13. Yeah. <laughs> I just mm. want to make sure that people who are just listening to audio understand. Thank so you. So you shovel your library, period, and then you <laughs> reveal cards. <laughs> I love the idea of a card that just says shovel, shovel is... your library as many times as you choose. Yeah, I was like, huh, that's a little bit interesting templating. All right. <laughs> New and then cards you, re- are crazy. Yeah. you reveal cards until you hit uh until like 13 if you're over 13 you bust and then if you're uh you want to stay under 13 and you can cast those spells for free but you do it with eight mana into it that's a lot yeah you know that's not what we're trying to do with this deck it might be a fun roll of the dice mm-hmm. uh a uh blackjack 21 moment but i'm just not I'm trying to have fun and yeah. There's stay definitely on there's definitely a deck where you build like with a very low CMC that this card is awesome in. Yeah, but all right, what's this uh, next one? Everglow Phoenix is two red red for a four four flying uh, phoenix, but it has mutate for three and red, so it means you can mutate on top of a non-human creature that you own. Um, and it says whenever this creature mutates, create a red artifact token named Feather with one and sacrifice Feather. Return target Phoenix card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. That feels like it's servicing uh, Gimbal, the face commander. I agree. Differently named tokens uh, just for some extra buff. It also gives Gimbal flying. I guess that's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just not what I'm trying to do here. So. Right. It's definitely not as good without Gimbal in the command zone, which cares about the different named tokens. Right. As, as much as I love Mutate. All right. Next is Felden of the Third Path. One red, red, legendary creature, human artificer for two, three. And it's got two and tap. Create a token that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. 
I'm the flavor text so sad she will come back to me. He keeps trying to build his wife and she keeps sacrificing herself at the end step. <laughs> She's terrible. Janet. At magic. <laughs> <laughs> Just stay in your second main phase for a couple more minutes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Felden is a ton of fun. He's great in a graveyard deck. He's da- great in a creature strategy. He's yeah. better with Gimbal who wants uh, tokens of different names. And it's an actual deck. You know? Yeah. Like- Feld- Felden is a very specific build around card. Yeah. Uh, next is Master of Ethereum. Uh, it's two and a blue for a star star artifact creature, Vidalcan Wizard. Uh, Master of Ethereum's power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts you control, and other artifact creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Uh, good card. Not what I'm trying to do. It's sort of keyword big. Uh, yeah. It's also more of a gimbal card. It cares about those those exactly. trampoly artifact creatures that he's, he's giving trample to. But without him in the command zone, not as good. Yeah. All right. Next is... Sandstep War Riders for three and a green. It's a creature, human warrior, four, four with trample. At the beginning of combat on your turn, bolster X, where X is the number of differently named artifact tokens you control. So we're putting more plus one, plus one counters onto fellows that have plus one, plus one counters. Right. This leans cool. it more into the plus one, plus one counters of it all of, of gimbals uh, in the command zone. Yeah. Basically, all the cards, you're probably sensing a theme that I'm pulling out are gimbal related. Right. Because when you look at it from my perspective, you're like, why is all this junk in here? This is a Brutaglad deck. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> this is a Rashmi and Ragavan deck now. Uh, this next two are are both like targeted removal spells. Yeah. Uh, Spine of saw it's a seven mana artifact. When it ETBs, destroy target permanent. Then when it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return it to its owner's hand. So it'll happen to you again. <laughs> Fool me once. This card's really good when you can sacrifice artifacts, which this deck doesn't seem super able to do. Yeah, I don't quite understand that. It's not clear to me. Yeah. Uh, maybe making copies of it somehow. I don't know. But then you have to, yeah, you have to make, co- t- you still don't get the ETB. Why do they keep putting this card in deck? It's a lit. It's very expensive, and you're but you're in team or your removal is sort of better than only having to run uh, Spine of Ishtha. So I, that's right. We've got it made. We got counter spells. We got uh, mm-hmm. chaos warp. We got you know all kind Green of good stuff. We can put a ton. in. Remove a Yeah, yeah. So we Spine of Ishtha isn't necessary. Struggle to survive. It's uh, tuna red for the first part of it which is an instant it deals damage to target creature equal to the number of lands you control okay and the other side the aftermath side which you can cast from your graveyard each player shuffles their like their graveyard into their library huh yeah this is sort of a strange removal spell in this deck obviously you want to cast it when you like it's good you'll have like probably five six lands when you cast it so you can remove most creatures but I guess it's just, you know, targeted creature removal, targeted graveyard removal it isn't particularly synergistic and isn't the best removal spell we can come up with. Yeah, it's quite a bit. And let's say I need the survive side. That means I'm going to have to put this into my bin somehow. Or uh, maybe I milled it somehow. Like, it's just, it's not focused. You know, yeah. you can do better than that. I agree. All right, Thopter Assembly. I see it all the time. Anytime I make one of these decks, I think about it. It's a six mana artifact creature Thopter. It's a five, five with flying at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control no Thopters other than Thopter assembly, return it to its owner's hand and create five, one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature tokens with flying. So six mana spell this yeah. is the beginning of my upkeep. Yeah. We got a problem. <laughs> it's extremely slow. Yeah. Uh, especially in a deck that will likely have other ways to make Thopters. And it's, like, <laughs> if like, you already have a Thopter token, it's just a six mana five five flyer. The beautiful thing about an artifact creature as well yeah. is there's so many ways to kill it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need this. <laughs> this is... Thopter assembly is just too slow unless you have a way to be reanimating or like sort of looping it from the graveyard. I look at the, that type of ability as a you better ability, okay? <laughs> Which means like, hey, that, that's pretty good. Well, it's six mana. You better be pretty good. You better be pretty okay? good. There's a, a lot. lot of really powerful six mana spells. <laughs> All right. Last one. Vidalcan Humiliator. It's three and a blue for a three, four creature of Vidalcan Wizard with Metalcraft. Whenever Vidalcan Humiliator attacks, if you control three or more artifacts, creatures your opponents control lose all abilities and have base power toughness one, one until end of turn. I don't know. He's so Vidalcan Humiliator. I can see being really good with 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 Gimbal and the. Oh yeah, zone. Are you kidding me? That's because great. then you've got these huge trampoly things. Right. Um. But otherwise, he's just a three four on the ground that like is you don't really want to gang up on. But like you'll just take the three and and that's that's it. Like Rashmi yep. Ragavan isn't a particularly attacky deck until that final swing. You don't see this card and think, oh, gas. You yeah. know, you see it and you might think game ender, but they're going to see it coming for an entire rotation. Mm-hmm. 
and they need to not have enough toughness to be able to deal with it. Right. Uh, like if they went wide, that's great for you that you can turn them all into one ones. Yeah. But you know, Craig still has 30 elves yeah. that we have a problem with. <laughs> yeah. I, I used to run Vidalcan Humiliator in a deck that could give that my whole board had flying mm. all the time. So it, gave, it it dropped all their flyers out of the air. Basically made my board unblockable. Yeah. So there are places where Vidalcan Humiliator is great. I don't think a value team or artifact play, build is exactly where it should be. Yep. If I wanted to build this deck a different way with uh, the face commander, then a lot of these cards do make sense. Uh, they're not bad cards. Yeah. You know? a lo- well, a lot of them aren't. <laughs> 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 all right. Let's talk about how the deck plays. So we've made the changes. We're like, all right, I've got my deck. It's sleeved up. It is in my satin tower, and I am at the game store. Yeah. How does the deck work? Well, uh, <laughs> you've got a few things that you need to do. Okay? <laughs> you got to set up a big pile of tokens first so that's going to be uh using your commander that's going to be a couple of these incidental spells here and there uh, you're going to make yourself a big pile of tokens and everybody's going to say well you're just doing a bunch of stupid junky moves yeah, over there like you got a bunch of crap on your board jake you got a bunch of annoying value and that's great for you you may crack your food whenever you want uh <laughs> but then you're going to play one of your tutors mm-hmm. and you're going to get that brutoclad and then everybody's going to see where you're going. They'll have a mm-hmm. turn to figure out how to deal with you. Then you'll drop that Brutoclad and you'll win. And then you'll tweet at me about it and say, I won. Jake. Yeah. <laughs> I love this deck. I love the upgrades that you made to it. I think it's going to make it a super fun to play. I think this is one of my favorite precons that came out for March of the Machines. So make sure you give a long list, uh, a long look at this deck list because it is a ton of fun. So to the listeners, what do you think of this precon? What do you think of the Tinker Time precon? Any cards we missed? Any cards we suggested to cut that you're like, are you crazy? Don't cut that. <laughs> Put that back in, Jake. What are you doing? What are you doing? Brutal class. Yeah. I, I mean, that's fair. There's definitely an argument to be made that I'm a massive clown and a fool um, <laughs> for doing this, but I can't help it. We read the comments and love to see you guys talking about the videos that we make. So start a discussion down there where we will be in there talking to you about this pre-con. It's a lot of fun. And if you saw any cards in this in this episode that you're like, I have got to have that for my Bruticlad deck, for my Rashmi deck, for my Gimbal deck, please go to cardkingdom.com slash command to support the show and pick up the magic cards that you're going to buy anyway. They've got the coolest selection of cards all in one place, which means you can get exactly the printing and exactly the quality that you want. So you can pay the price that you want for each of these cards. We're not going to be waiting for a bunch of different envelopes to come in and it's going to just be that single envelope from card kingdom tight it's like taped up so tidy i had i had a card kingdom i had a card kingdom envelope show up soaking wet it had been pouring (laughs) rain and i was like oh these are all lost but because they had taped it in this little package and it was all tidy i opened it and all of my cards were safe so go to cardkingdom.com slash command because they know how to treat magic cards and treat you with great customer service uh, little does Rachel know there was a Card Kingdom employee, bloodied and brutal and soaking wet, <laughs> who had just crawled and placed it there. Now that's customer service. <laughs> <laughs> and once you have those cards in your hand, you're going to want to protect them. Go to ultrapro.com slash command to pick up all of the magic accessories we've been talking about all episode. Pick up your satin towers and your satin cubes and your play mats, whether they're sparkly or not sparkly or double-sided or, or black and white. Or they have so many cool playmats me oh my the march the machine playmats are insane this yeah, time around really fun i make sure that you were signed up for the ultra pro uh newsletter because they're going to hit you up with insane deals there's always great discounts there and you're not going to find out unless it's in your inbox plus they get a lot of secret layer drop playmats they had an awesome uh transformers one they yeah. had the the like lisa frank style binder ones oh yeah that i ordered the pony <laughs> from it's amazing the 90s binder yeah and you've got to keep going to ultrapro.com slash command to see what they've got available because it's not always just the stuff that's available at your game store although you should support them there as well all right 
uh let's go to the end step and talk about something cool outside of magic what uh what have you been doing outside of magic jake what i've makes been you happy uh so a long time ago jordan um our writer jordan pridgen um and grav they introduced me to this game called pulsar lost colony mm-hmm. which is a game that literally nobody plays uh the servers <laughs> are like five Just people you, jake, playing jake, at once jake, jordan <laughs> jamie uh like i played with it i played this game with my friends this weekend and they're like how do you find your game i'm like you'll find it <laughs> there's a couple on the list uh but anyway this game is a space exploration game where you pretend to be a crew uh-huh. and i'm sure there are better crew simulation games out there but you have to you know just roam the galaxy in a ship you have to board other ships and steal ships and uh you have to say you have like the game literally doesn't work it, unless you talk like captain picard like <laughs> <laughs> engineering initiate jump prep and then i s- charted a course all right uh warp warp to 738 or whatever (laughs) and then when you get to the place you need to talk to the people but it's out of reach of you so you have to actually say to the science officer open comms to the trading post and then i can negotiate with these people on screen (laughs) it's the most beautiful game ever and i've been waiting uh like years to get my friends to play it but every time i play it with them they hate it so I discovered the AIs are pretty good, actually. Way more fun to play <laughs> with than my friends. So I'm playing a ton of Pulsar Lost Colony. I love this game. Uh, not a sponsor. Just cool. Just just cool. <laughs> Speaking of just cool, we've got a cool staff here at the Command Zone. Let's say thank you to all of them. It's Craig Blanchett, Damon Lentz, Arthur Mattercroft, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Josh Murphy, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Waldo, Garav Galati, Jamie Block, Mitch Trafford, Evan Limburger, Gabriel Pozos, Megan Yip, Eric Lem, Josh Lee Kwai, and Jimmy Wong. That's a lot of names. Some of those some good some good cool kids. Thank Not you a sponsor, so much, patrons. Just cool. <laughs> The folks who watch our ads, the people who are Patreon supporters of us, mm. like, look at us. We didn't start this channel. We didn't start this company. Uh, we got, you know, life-changing moves going yeah. on in our lives thanks to you all who uh, go ahead and listen to our sponsor call-outs, our ads, uh, join our Patreon. It means a lot to me personally. Mm. Like, there's a lot of stuff that we would not get to do yeah. if it wasn't for that support. So I appreciate it big time. You guys make the difference. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs> <laughs>